Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome for this special Sunday service. My name is Enoch Jordan and I'm so glad that I'm going to usher you to the great word that God has put in the heart of his servant, Reverend Robert Kasibwe. In the meantime, if you're watching from YouTube and you have not subscribed to our channel, I want to request you to subscribe. It is just written down. Just click the word subscribe and then you hit the notification bell so that every time you get notified when we go online with any service. Kindly, please, every Tuesday, join us online. We are live on Facebook and we're also live on YouTube with a Bible study by our resident pastor, Pastor John in Basura. That is from exactly 6 to 7 p.m. We are currently in Patmos, and I want to assure you the book of Revelation is a great book. Please also, every Friday, we are live from exactly 1 to 2 p.m. by our senior pastor, Reverend Robert Kasibwe. And I want to remind you that service is called the Holy Spirit Lunch Hour Revival Service. Kindly tune in and utilize that button, the one that they call comment. Utilize, leave comments for us so that we can pray with you. We can follow back and give us also a feedback there. And then every Sunday is a very special day for us. We are here at Dominion Church International Mbuya. And then we come live at exactly 10 a.m. up to 11 a.m. by our senior pastor, Reverend Robert Kasiwe. You don't want to miss that one out. It's a great one. And then also, I kind of want to remind you that please, at any time, if you feel to give your seed, your offertory, or anything, the number is right on the screen. Utilize that number so that you will be able to continue supporting the work of the Lord. Please kindly, at this time, I want you to help me rise up on your feet from wherever you are because it's an important moment for getting to praise and worship. Rise up on your feet and help me welcome the Dominion Praise Ministries. Please stay blessed and enjoy your service ahead. Thank you. Come on, raise up on your feet and praise with us. Amen. <laughs> Woo! I command my soul to bless the Lord. 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 Come on.
and We give you glory, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice in worship. Give him all the glory. Come on, love on him, love on him, love on him. <laughs> For he deserves all the worship, he deserves all the honor. The Lord, the King, who was and is and is to come. We join with the angels to worship you, O God. We join with the heavens to give you glory, O oh God. Huh. We give you honor. We give you glory. For you alone deserves our worship. For you alone deserves the praise. You alone deserves the honor, so we lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh, oh, we lift you high. There is none beside. 
signs So we lift you Yes. 
The Bible says that God has given him a name which is above. Which is above. Which is above. Wherefore God has highly exalted him, the Bible says. And has given him a name which is above. Now when we're in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verses 22 going up the Bible says that he is exalted above all principalities and powers and rulers of this world is exalted. Jesus is exalted. Jesus is exalted. Jesus is exalted. Not only he is exalted, but the Bible says by that position he has authority and powers over everything under him. In fact, in his own words, in the book of Matthew chapter 28, from verses 18, he says, that I've been given all power and authority, all power, in the heavens and on this earth, exalted. 
Exalted. Exalted. Exalted. Whether Satan understands it or not, whether you understand it or not, whether you lift him up there or you don't, our Lord and Savior he is exalted. He is exalted. But it will do you well if you exalt him. It will do you well if you begin to exalt him above every other thing. Because his exalted position is not contested. It's unopposed. He stands alone in power and in glory. He stands alone. And whether you believe it or not, and I want you to know, Mr. Islam, that at the end of the day when we all appear before the throne of grace, we will understand his exalted position. So it will do you good if you bow to him now. Instead of stand before him as a judge, Jesus is exalted. And so we exalt him. Hosa, Zana, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Buewafa, Erano Zukira. Hey. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Wakulu, Enyo, Tukuyi, Damo, Muyi Musa, Tukuyi Musa, Tukuyi Musa, Okusinga, Esimbi, Fe Tukuyi Musa. Oh, kusinga yona, tuku yimusa. Oh, kusinga feza ne sabu. Eyo wakulu, wakulu. Eyo tuku yis. Kati mukulu mizengo gambozana. Father, we exalt you far above. We acknowledge your exaltation where you are lifted far above. Far above. Far above. Far above nations. Far above politics. Far above religion. Far above problems. You stand alone in that exalted position. And so we bless you. And we thank you that before that exalted position you say to us that when I am lifted, when I am lifted, I will draw all men to me. Everything will bow to me. And so we place you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. to the Lamb. Amen. Well, once again, we welcome you. And I believe God is blessing you already. And is continuing to bless you in the name of Jesus. If you have your Bible, please, would you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 12, the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 12.
for the couple of weeks now, we've been dealing with the ministry of Jesus, our Lord, from the gospel according to St. Matthew. And last Sunday, we saw Jesus standing in the temple. And he was asked a question about a man who had a withered hand. And the Bible teaches us that he commanded the man to stretch. And the man obeyed. And a great miracle happened. And from that text we saw that your desired result that whatever we desire, whatever I desire to see being manifested in my life depends on how I I obey and execute the command of the Lord. For disobedience and rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. First Samuel chapter 15 from verses 22 to 23. But today let's continue to follow our Lord. As he ministers to people and so he moves on now and as he goes about ministering the Bible tells us in that great gospel of Matthew verses 21 and then 22 the Bible says in verses 21 that in his name shall the Gentiles trust. In his name. In his name. In his name. Shall the Gentiles trust. Trust. In his name shall the Gentile trust. The trust they have is in that name. And when they mention the Gentiles, they are reminding the Jews also that the name Jesus is not for those only or for them only. The name of Jesus works for every man and every woman under the planet before the Bible could say in his name the Gentiles should trust Jesus the man or Jesus the person was doing ministry at that time in Israel is calling at that time was for the Jews the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 15 that Jesus fulfilled all all, all the promises God made to the Jews. And so his ministry was specifically for the Jews. But as he moves around, the prophet reminds them and God reminds us and God gives us hope that as much as is Jesus to the Jews a healer, a restorer of lives, is also Jesus to the Jews at the same time. That the same way the Jews can trust him is the same way the Gentiles can trust him. The same way he can do miracles for them is the same way he can do miracles for us. So at the end of the day all of us can say in, with understanding that God is no respecter. God is no respecter of persons. What he does for the Jews he will do also for the Gentiles. What he does for the Whites, he will also do for the blacks. What he does for the Hispanics, he will also do for the Asians. It makes no difference. In his name, shall the Gentiles trust. And the Bible goes on to say, the next verse, and they brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind, and dumb. 
And he healed him. In so much that the blind and the dumb both spoke and so. And all the people were amazed. And they said, Is not this the son of David? I would like to minister to you, ministering a few minutes. The invisible enemy. The invisible enemy. The invisible enemy that only can be seen by the invisible Lord Jesus. And so Jesus is ministering and all of a sudden they brought him a man. And the Bible tells us the man is both dumb and is Deaf. Is dumb and is deaf. To some people, they could say probably it is curse. To some people, they would say that probably he has a breakdown of the nervous system. Oh, there's something wrong with his earring. If he was living in our world, they would say probably he need an earring aid. Or probably they would say that maybe the eardrum is not inside the ear. Yeah, that's why he cannot hear. And as when they went further to investigate, they would say that besides even being deaf, he cannot speak. Maybe it has nothing to do with the nerve system or the senses that has to do with the speech. And to you and me, we would call him deaf and dumb. Because that's what we see. That's what we understand. To us, if you can't speak, you cannot speak. Either you were born that way or something happened to you. But we will never go further to really understand the depth of the root causes of the problem. And so the Bible tells us they brought a man who was both dumb and he was deaf. And when they brought him to Jesus, the, then Jesus raised his voice and he rebuked and he rebuked and he rebuked the spirit Spirit of the demon or the devil that was causing damp and deafness, and he rebuked it. And when he rebuked the spirit, the Bible says he both heard and he spoke. And in the same way, we have many people who are living in conditions and they are being influenced by a invisible enemy. And it will take Jesus. It will take his Person. It will take his power. It will take his name. It will take his presence. It will take God who is a spirit. Because when you begin to deal with demons, you are dealing with spirits. And no human person can see a spirit. It takes God who is a spirit. It takes Jesus who lives in the spirit realm to get to understand and to know where the devil is and what he does, whatever he does it and whatever he does it. And up to that point, nobody really could discern what was the problem. To them, the man is just Deaf. To them, the man is just blind. But to Jesus, he's 
blind Muzibe. because of a spirit. He is deaf Kuchigala. because of a spirit. Most of the challenges and the problems of humanity are caused by an invisible enemy. Most of the troubles of the world, the woes we have in the world, let it be religious woes, let it be ethnic woes, let it be tribal woes, let it be race woes, whatever war it is that is destroying our civilization. When you look in scriptures, you will get to know that behind every wall, behind every problem we have, behind every sickness that is affecting our world, there is a demon, or there is a spirit, or there is a Satan, and that spirit and that Satan cannot be dealt with with your understanding, cannot be dealt with with your education, cannot be dealt with with your politics cannot be dealt with with your connection cannot be dealt with with what kind of neighborhood you live in whether you live in a posh neighborhood or you live in a slum whether you live in a mansion or you live in a shack whether you live in a slum or you live in a rich neighborhood whether you live in America or you live in Uganda whether you are the president or you are a nobody, whether you are king or queen or princess, there is an invisible enemy that has no respect to who you are. Are you hearing me, somebody? He has no respect to your money, no respect to your dignity, no respect. In fact, his mission and his assignment is to destroy everything concerning you. But hear me and hear me good. When our Lord Jesus came, he said to us in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 10, he says the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And then he went on to say, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And in the letters of John chapter Three, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of Satan. That is the only one. He is the anointed one. He is the commissioned one. He is the sent one to get every demon, to get every sickness, to get every disease from the rich, from the the poor, from the religious, from the witch doctors, from anybody in this world. Because for him, he knows what is the cause of your problem. The invisible enemy that we have can only be dealt with by the invisible redeemer that all of us cannot see with our natural eyes except to put our faith and our trust in him. And after that miracle, the Bible tells us that the people in that place were amazed. And they said, wow, is no this the son of David? How could he know? Is no this? Oh, no. Look at the expression of their words. Is no this? Oh, no. See Is no this? It's not this. See, yeah, yeah. It's not this. See, oh, no. The son of David. See, Mara Daudi. And then they concluded. 
verses 24. But when the Pharisees heard it, <laughs> they said, this fellow does not cast out devils, but by Belzabel, the prince of devils. They gave credit <laughs> to demons. They said the reason why that Jesus was able to cast out demons because the prince of demons who is Satan is abiding on him. He has been anointed by the chief demon. That was their conclusion. And many people have the same assumption. They credit everything to demons. And they discredit God and his power. But what is happening in our world today baffles their understanding. Because no one can say that demons can do something now. No one can say that demons can heal now. No one can say that demons can do something now. Even the witch doctors now, they are all saying, if you know how to pray, <laughs> <laughs> call upon God. And that is just the beginning. The day is coming when Satan will be reminded. The day is coming when every knee will bow. They will acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and he is great and he is greatly to be praised and he can do anything that his power and his mercy and his miracles cannot be compared to anything Thing in this world because demons were created. Jesus is not created. Jesus is creator. And there has to be a difference. There has to be a difference. And listen what I'm going to say. I'm not waiting for that date for Jesus to come. Right now, I believe there has to be a difference between a create and a creation. Let me say that again. Right now, I believe there has to be a difference between a creation, Satan, demons, and a creator God. And because Jesus can see the causes of your problem. I can believe in God that is going to address them in the name of Jesus. Because what it seems to you to be something that might not be the real problem. What is bothering you? What is attacking you? Attacks your marriage. Attacks your mind. Attacks your home. Attacks our nation. It is more spiritual than physical. It is more spiritual than natural. It is more spiritual than political. What is happening in Uganda with the politics to a certain extent is more spiritual than natural. Because sometimes you sit down and you begin to question yourself. How come we have the smartest brains? In government, we have the smartest brain in parliament and they do stupid stuff. There's something more to our lives. There's something more to your life. But we thank God that we have a Savior who is also invisible. Who can look in our political system. Look in our health system. Look in your body. Inside the body there, And begin to identify that this is where cancer is. This is where the pain is. This this is where the headache is. Oh, this is where this and that and that. I hear 
hearing me somebody. I hearing me somebody. I hearing me somebody. And that Savior, He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. And He is alive forevermore. He came on this planet called us and He showed us the problem. And the Bible goes on to say, and He died. When He died, He went to the place where that invisible enemy lives, a place called hell. And the Bible teaches us, when He rose from the dead, He took the keys from Him. That Jesus, who took the keys from your invisible enemy, He is alive. Alive. And before he ascended to heaven, he said to me and you that these signs shall follow you if you believe in my name, you shall cast out those demons. Raise your hands. And we are going to cast out those demons. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over every demonic activity. We take authority over every demonic influence. Over that home. Over that judge. Over that mother. Over that child. Some demons are running them insane. Some demons are causing them to commit suicide, to have suicide intentions and ideas. Some demons are causing them to be poor and to remain poor, to have nothing in this world. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke every demonic activity. We rebuke every demonic influence. We rebuke every demonic powers. Get out of that home. Get out of that head. Get out of that spirit. Get out of that soul. Get out of that body. You spirit of asthma. You spirit of ulcers. You spirit of, 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 of madness. You spirit of arthritis. You spirit of COVID. You spirit of HIV, your spirit of woe, your demonic powers that are causing your God's people to remain weak. We rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, we command you to be free from your head up to the soles of your feet. Be set free in your mind. Be set free in your heart. Be set free in your body. Be healed in the name of Jesus from your head up to the soles of your feet. Now, if you are listening to me and you have never surrendered your life to Jesus, this is your moment. You need that invisible deliverance. What you face in this world is far greater and far powerful than you. But is very, is very weak before Jesus. I want you to open your heart and open your spirit and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much that you to die for me. You sent Jesus to live for me. You sent Jesus to rise from the dead for me. And I accept him. I receive him as my Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. Today is my Savior. Today is my Savior. Tomorrow will be my Savior. Up to my death in the name of Jesus. If you accepted Christ, there is a number on your screen. Please share with us your testimony and we will rejoice with you and we will encourage you more to walk with Jesus. But also, join our platforms. There's more messages to encourage you. Now get that offering and let's give to the Lord. Let's give to the Lord. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible says give 
and shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible says, bring your tithe and your offerings to the house of the Lord. And then God will command a blessing. I bless you. I bless your home. I bless your business. I bless your giving. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Amen. With joy and gladness. We have our members of this church. But also wonderful ministers that have decided to honor the institution of marriage. And they have decided to define marriage by the word of God. As it was in the beginning when the Bible tells us and Adam saw Eve and said, This is now the bone of my bones, the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman. And the Bible goes on to say, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. And now on the 4th of September, 2021 here at Dominion Church only by invitation <laughs> only by invitation you'll be witnessing the marriage of our brother Elisha Sendaula and our sister Nakaiza Reed saying their vows that day. The rest of us who will not come, please watch our media platforms. But if there is anybody out there who has a reason why these two cannot get married, please contact our church office. We'll be able to hear you out and find a way of helping us and helping you. We love you. Please pray for these wonderful brothers and sisters. We wish them well. We bless their plans. We bless their wedding day. We pray that God will meet their needs. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We love you. We continue to pray for you. I love you and I continue to pray for you and I bless you until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.